Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on the Nintendo Switch. Hey, everybody else did it. <laughs> like, we needed something to record this week, so since we haven't talked about it... <laughs> And Lux thought this would be less work than the 12 other ideas I suggested. <laughs> well, with the way things went today, I think it was a good idea. <laughs> Lux's phone died, guys. It was a painful yet quick death. Painful for me, quick for the phone. <sighs> oh, well, moving on to another tech product I'm hoping to get. Probably nowhere soon, but hey, it's a Nintendo product. If they sold air in a box, we'd buy it. You'd buy it. I'd check yours out first and then maybe get one. <laughs> uh, look at all these fresh features. Does it play Splatoon? Yes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the Nintendo Switch. An interesting idea. Myself and... People have been wondering, like, why did it take them so long? <laughs> I'm thinking it was basically them waiting for technology to catch up to this particular idea. Because I think Nintendo's actually had this particular idea for a while. It's indicating how the 3DS worked and how the Wii U worked. But the technology just wasn't there to let them put a console in your hands on the go. Been getting closer, though. I mean, when Kid Icarus, the first trailers, I'm like, oh, that, you're lying, Lux. That's not a handheld. <laughs> You're also lying because, what do you mean he doesn't know how to jump? <laughs> the franchise was a platformer. <laughs> and yes, I can say franchise. Those who know this series know there are two games prior to that debacle. It's a good game, though. It's just not Kid Icarus. <laughs> yeah, I, I like watched the heck out of that first trailer. I, I watched it so many times, and the next day I lost so much time by searching the internet for everyone's anal analyzing videos and reaction videos to actually watching that first trailer of the Nintendo Switch reveal. Yeah, I was like, I like this. Finally, information. Finally, I can dig through and find all the weird things that are probably being hinted at. And is that a vent on the back? Is that a, oh, no, wait, that's actually where the power cable and video cable come out. And then, of course, the parts that really got me excited too during the trailer was like, we're getting an update to Splatoon. Does that mean we get Splatfests back? <laughs> I don't care if I have to buy a new game and a new console. I want Splatfests, damn you! <laughs> uh, I know. I've only played Splatoon a couple times since the final Splatfest. It's pretty much what kept us going, because I just turn it on now and go, Oh, yeah, the, the friends I used to play with don't play this anymore either. Oh, crickets. <laughs> Town still looks nice and everything, and it makes me wonder what they are going to upgrade to it other than all those gorgeous hairstyles, especially for the poor male character. Yes, well, maybe we'll finally get Octolings. That would be cool. So I'm pretty sure I showed you the reveal trailer. I haven't shown you the Jimmy Kimmel footage yet. No, you haven't. You were probably going to do it before this recording, but we were trying to see if we could get your phone repaired. Mm-hmm. My poor, poor phone. Basically, all it was was him playing Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on it and him freaking out like, oh my god, you brought this on my show? Because he was fanboying like no one's business. Especially since Miyamoto was in the audience. Why have you not shown me this? Because life. Good answer. Good answer. And there was a lot of adulting between when I first watched it and now also when I first talked about it, you didn't seem interested in it, so. Yeah, because remember that whole thing? You know, part of what makes this interesting, you're fanboying over the Switch, and I'm going, eh, I'm not one over yet. <laughs> uh, what was really funny is Nintendo did a great bait and switch with that particular video. They first announced the that they were going to be on the show to show off Super Mario Run. That's just pretty okay so far. I need to play it more to get used to the controls. Tap, 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 tap. No, Mario! Jump higher! <laughs> it was like the most downloaded game. Yeah, but I haven't really had a chance to really sit down and play it other than like, oh, here's the introductory levels since they're free. I kind of played through them enough to beat them and then I was like, I'll come back to this later. No, I'm saying the game is doing insanely well, so I hope it's better than decent. <laughs> it's a good Mario game that was made specifically for a mar yeah. marble phone? No, mobile phone. 
You can't smoke your phone. Oh, see, I heard marble, not Marlboro. <laughs> but basically, yeah, Jimmy Kimmel was fanboying over Miyamoto because he was sitting in the audience watching him play. And like I said, it's a nice bait and switch because they, like they said, they were talking about, oh, it's Super Mario Run. They're showing it off on the show. And then Reggie goes, I got something else. Lifts up a question block. And there's the Nintendo Switch running Zelda. And he just explodes. It going, I can't, that, 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 that ends. <laughs> then he, when they reveal it's Legend of Zelda, he starts fanboying at and talking about the whole backstory behind where Zelda came from. And like, yeah, it was about you going up to your woods and exploring and everything. I know everything. <laughs> I'm sure that never gets old. Yeah, I was going to say, but it was basically like me and you, except you'd be there inside all and be like, oh my god! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just going to fanboy a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Lux gets dragged off by security and I secure autograph. <laughs> uh, so I'll show it to you later. <laughs> but from what you've seen of the Switch and what I've told you about the Switch, what do you think of it so far? So the initial concept. Yeah. I mean, the initial concept that's nice. They tried to do that a bit with the Wii U with being able to have the off-screen mode and to be farther away from the TV and still have the unit work. So that really expands on that. But I don't really care about being able to take it around with me. I barely take my 3DS anywhere. I barely took my DS anywhere. I barely took my Game Boy Advance anywhere. The one that went everywhere was my original Game Boy because I was a kid and it stuck in a car. <laughs> and the thing, you could, you could usually use it as a self-defense weapon and still be able to play it the next day. Yes, mine still works. Mine does not. It's, it's actually the one that started me in the upgrade trend because I dropped a 10-pound tape players on the screen. Specifically, the corner of the 10-pound tape player hit the screen dead center. Yes, so being able to take the Switch anywhere, not that big a deal for me. And of course, my other knee-jerk emotional reaction is, oh, so Breath of the Wild is going to be on the Wii U and the Switch. Didn't I just go through this BS with Twilight Princess? Because I had a pre-order for the GameCube, and they said it was going to come out for the Wii. So then I canceled the GameCube pre-order and got the Wii version. And the control scheme and the stupid fishing thing. <laughs> yeah, she kind of had issues with the first little mini game at the beginning where you have to catch a fish and get a cat to notice that you caught a fish so it could run off back to her master so she could be proud of the cat so she wasn't mopey anymore because she lost her cat so you could get a like a slingshot from her so you could then impress kids and then do all this other stuff for an hour and a half before you actually got to the actual game yeah and i'm like no give me a sword give me a treasure chest and let's go <laughs> uh and the only difference between the Switch version and the Wii U version, from what we understand, is it performs slightly better on the Switch, and you can now take it with you. That's the only difference. So there's no matter what, you're getting a good version of the game, unlike last time where people still argue over whether or not the GameCube version was better because it was this classic control scheme, or you went with the Wii version because it had the waggle control. Yeah, and the correct answer now is you go with the HD Wii U re-release. <laughs> like that. And the correct answer now is you go with the re-release. Yeah. It's like, I wasn't excited about the Wii U until I got my hands on it. So things could change once I get my hands on a demo model. Mm -hmm. Which will, from what I understand, will be based on a new rumor, will be out in GameStops and the like a month before the actual release date. So that's good to know. And there's a bunch of other interesting stuff in this new rumor that I just um, heard about today. Like, the launch lineup is going to be insane. I mean, you're going to have Mario, Zelda, Pokemon. Uh, well, not Pokemon at, at launch, but in the same launch year. A new IP, a Mario RPG. That's just from Nintendo. And then you have all the third parties, like a remastered version of Skyrim is going to be on there. And another really big RPG heavy hitter, Mass Effect Andromeda, looks like it's going to be on there. And it's just, you're like, the list just goes on. And you're like, this is all in the first month this thing's going to be out? If this is true, yeah, it's going to be the best-selling console ever. 
Yeah, and it's just, can that really be true with Nintendo? God, look at the initial DS lineup. Well, the DS, the initial DS lineup was actually pretty good. The 3DS lineup, though, that that was crickets. That's the one I meant. I apologize. Yeah, the, the, it was so much of a crickets, and the system was overpriced that they actually gave people who first bought it refunds and and like well not complete refunds but a price matching and they also give you the ambassador program which give you a bunch of pre games i was one of those people yes i tend to be a later adopter so i got mine for much cheaper got a limited edition version with pre-installed software and then discovered that the game sucked. But hey, it's digital. It doesn't take up any actual space. We've also both upgraded our internal storage over time. Both 32 gigabyte cards slapped in there. Yeah, that's going to be the pain in updating to the new 3DS XL because it takes the small one. So I can't just take my card out and switch it over. And that's another thing with upgrading to the Nintendo Switch. With the exception of my Atari, I've kept all the consoles, folks. I haven't even switched over my Wii stuff to my Wii U. <laughs> Which I have done. Though I'm not quite sure about... Because this is... Nintendo is still calling it because they're not sure how well it's going to do at this point. A third pillar, which is what they called the DS when it first came out. I'm like, yeah, it's only a third pillar if it fails. <laughs> if the Nintendo Switch succeeds, it's going to take over both the home and the handheld line. Yeah, and that's another thing, is where does the Switch leave the handheld market? Is all support and manufacture for the 3DS and other, any potential future handheld models going to be off the table because the console can serve both functions? Right now, Nintendo's official statement is it's more of a home console than it is a handheld. So we're gonna keep the 3DS line around and we are, working on a future development, but that could mean that we're waiting to see how well the Switch does. Yeah, because also the problem with the Switch being your handheld is that hmm, households with more than one user, you go out, you both go out at the same time, who gets to play? That's the only real downside, though Nintendo basically wants to make the stand so cheap that you buy more than one of them basically you buy one for each tv in the house so you could take your switch from each room to each room which probably also means that you can also have multiple switches in multiple rooms and since the new my nintendo account um the games are going to from what we understand the games are going to be locked to your account not the system anymore so you could really just log in on any nintendo switch and get your games and play them but yeah, I see what you mean by like it could be complicated for a household that could only afford one. Yes. Well, that really depends on the price, though. If the price is in the range everyone who's guessing it is, if families can support multiple DSs, they can support multiple Switches. Yes, but then you still have to buy multiple games if you're getting digital copies. Because if the games are now locked to the user and not the unit... And the trend does go towards digital games. Yes, but if Nintendo keeps the policy the way they have it, if a person's logged in on that Switch, those games are available. So you could actually have multiple kids and have them all logged in on all the Switches. So each kid can be available to each unit. And if Nintendo does it right, they could also have a family account. So you can log into the family account on each Switch, and those games will be available on all the Switches, so you can still only buy one copy of the game. So, ha ha, I countered your argument. <laughs> Which is a rare thing I can do, people. Give me this moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's presuming that digital still be remains a primary game format, which it's going to. A lot of people want digital content. They can get it faster. You get it right on, you know, launch day at the exact minute. You can buy inexpensive games to play on your system that, you know, didn't really rate having a disc or cartridge. And then you have me, I'm like, I will have a physical copy and you will pry it out of my cold dead hands. <laughs> I remember your whole debate when the Mighty Number no. 9 Kickstarter was going off. Do I get the physical copy or I just get the diddle, just the copy? And then you find out like, oh, the physical copy is basically the 
DRM free version of the game on a thumb drive. Okay, I'll just go with the digital copy since it's DRM free, anyways. Yeah. And then we actually got the game. <laughs> yeah, I think that game had many problems in development, and that's why it's so bad. Yeah, it's just, I want what I played in the beta, mm -hmm. and that's not what we got. But back to the Switch, which hopefully is not going to be a bait and switch. But <laughs> You knew I had to fit it in somewhere. Uh, Why me? I thought you were switching back to the switch. This conversation is going to get confusing if we do a lot of this. <laughs> also, some of the names that are rumored to be, like the Mario game that was shown off in the trailer, apparently is called Super Mario Switcheroo. Oh, no. Puns. Japan, I know that you love puns, but... Oh, give me a break. At least the Splatoon one has a nice name on it. It's called Splatoon Refresh. Makes sense. Yeah. Stay fresh. <laughs> For the audience listening at home, Lutz just did the pose. Hey, I'm a big fan of Callie, if I haven't mentioned that before in the other two Splatoon podcasts. <laughs> Pretty sure you did. And even though I'm editing it out, I did just double check with her on which the names were. I, I'm a visual person. Names don't stick with me. So if you ever meet me and I go, Hi, I know you, but I'm sorry I don't remember your name. It's not me being rude. It's just the fact that I don't remember names. Yeah, I'm impressed who remembers mine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so what games that you have seen so far that you may be interested in, or the ones I've mentioned recently in this podcast that you may be interested in? All I care about are Legend of Zelda and Splatoon. I am completely over Mario. Bravely Default has spoiled me on all RPGs for all eternity. <laughs> uh, funny enough, I can actually still play Mass Effect because it's a different type of RPG. You don't really have to do a lot of grinding on it to do levels and stuff like that. Unlike standard JRPG... You should rephrase. It spoiled you on all... JRPGs. When have I ever played anything that's not? Other Good. than that Dungeons and... Well, that Dungeons and Dragons game isn't even really an RPG. Oh, yeah. You're, yeah, no, it's not. It's, it's, an, it's an arcade coin eater. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... But that's the closest thing I can think of to American... Name me one RPG that I've played that is not from Japan. Hmm. I would do the Jeopardy theme here, but I might get copyright infringement. Yeah, so kind of all I play in the RPG, Golden Sun, Chrono Trigger, mm, yeah, Final a, Fantasy, yeah. earlier editions. Oh, I would love to play a Golden Sun with the mechanics of Bravely Default. That would be an awesome game. It would, so maybe we could see something like that on the Switch. The handheld market is impossible limbo. The JRPGs have to go somewhere. And speaking of mobile games we want to see on the Switch, I've heard good things about that new Pokemon game, but then I heard a, the third version of it will actually be on the Switch. So I'm like, if that's true, I am so getting that version. Because <laughs> then I can actually finally play Pokemon on my TV and it won't be some janky version of the game. I did like both of the games that were released on the GameCube, by the way. This is not including the stadium game, which was terrible. <laughs> it really was. It was like, you can play your Pokemon on the big screen and stuff like that. I, I can do that with the 64 version, which is so much better. Because <laughs> it was basically like, stripped down battles. All you, did with the, all you did was the battles. There was no kind of any single player. The online matches were crud. Uh, <laughs> yeah. How much do you want to bet we get one of those for the Switch? <laughs> Hopefully it's like Gale of Darkness and the other one. Because that would be okay. I'd be okay with a third one of those. Because they were good games, but they weren't really Pokemon games. Though I did like the fact that you could steal Pokemon from bad people. I, I need that to be a feature in games. That needs that's on my list of things to do to get me back into the Pokemon franchise. I have not bought Sun or Moon. And just to get you guys to totally kill me, I did not buy X or Y. I did buy X and Y. I bought Black and White. I did not buy Black and White 2. Oh, yeah, I didn't buy Black and White either. Or 2. So, yeah, I, I, I'm i really interested in those games because of what I've heard about them is true. And 
it's probably true because my friends were talking about it. They got rid of HMs, which was a big check on my list of, if you fix that problem, because apparently you can just rent Pokemon for that now. I'm like, oh my, it's, that makes so much sense. <laughs> yeah, it's like, finally something out of the Pokemon Ranger mechanic that's useful. And I love how, I'm pretty sure by the images I saw, Charizard's the flyer. I'm like, but he can't learn fly. <laughs> I love how they, they have this great picture when this dragon's more dragon than you. <laughs> yes. Showing the Aloha evolution of Executor. Uh, so yeah, back to the Switch. Any of the features we know about from the initial trailer you were liking? Like the fact you can detach the two controllers and reconfigure them in other ways? That was kind of useful because we do have multiple controllers on the Wii and the Wii U that you have to switch out depending on what you want to play. So being able to reconfigure an existing controller is probably a time saver and a money saver. But at the same time, it makes it more vulnerable to breakage. I just realized something. The Nintendo Switch is the first Nintendo console since, the, I think, the Super Nintendo to come with two controllers by default. Because all the other systems, yeah, from the 64 on, only came with one controller. Even though they had four ports, they only came with one controller. The Nintendo Switch comes with two. Because the little Joy-Cons, which is what they're officially called, can pop off and turn sideways and become little controllers on their own. Yeah, Joy-Con. Uh, yeah, that's what they're officially called. Joy-Con 1 and Joy-Con 2. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you should see the expression on her face right now. No, we're never going to do videos of these. Well, unless she's doing cosplay, then maybe. <laughs> also, thank you, Sasame Jan, for saying that uh, that you do want to see her in cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> I miss that. Lux checks the comments section more often than I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the one where I was going back and forth with him on how I wanted to see the longer version of his uh, video he did on the art, on my art. Ah, yes, that we totally dropped the ball on and didn't go back and... Comment uh, on. Yes, and elaborate on all the questions he had regarding the artwork and the inspiration and the theming and all that. Because mm -hmm. each season of MLP had a particular theme to it. But we can go on about comments later. <laughs> yeah, because this is supposed to be about the Nintendo Switch. But the problem is I don't have a whole lot to say, so we kind of keep tangenting. Yeah, I keep going through stuff. And I know you've mentioned a couple of theoreticals, but any particular game from the 3DS you'd like to see a upgraded version on the Nintendo Switch? Mm. I can think of one right now that we we're just talking about. <laughs> it starts with a B and ends with a default. <laughs> yeah, my only problem there is if they make another one, I will have to buy it. And I'm still back on the first one. <laughs> Yeah, me too. I didn't even pull out the second one and put it in my system long enough to get the costume that I got for pre-ordering. Because <laughs> I had to do that by October, and as you can tell, it's no longer October. <laughs> uh, but it's kind of hard to say. I've backed off so much in gaming in general and game purchases overall. If you look at my collection across generations, each generation the collection gets smaller. Yeah, progressively smaller as I look at her shelves. <laughs> and mine is even worse because it goes from the hundred and some odd games we had for our original NES to like the 30 we had for the Super Nintendo and then like the 5 we had for the 64 and then we're back to like 10 for the GameCube because there were a lot of good games for the GameCube. And then you have the Wii, which is probably five, six games as well. And then you have the Wii U, which is probably maybe six or seven games in total, including the digital ones. I still need to finish playing through um, Xenoblade Chronicles X. Problem is, it's also a really long game, and so is Fallout 4. And there's a lot of adulting going on. And adulting has a tendency to cut into the amount of time you have to play video games. Thank God there are things like Christmas break <laughs> and catching up on your podcasts. So you had a backlog of stuff that you could upload and have 
Uh, I'm not hiding that from behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would be interested to see what they could do with a rhythm game. Oh, yeah. We haven't seen much of those. Like The genre kind of died out. Well, they kind of oversaturated the market. It was like when in the U.S. every anime we got was a mecha one. Mm. It's like, yeah, overdone. But I'd be interested to see what this particular hardware configuration could do with one. I've already heard a rumor that you could take the screen and slide it into a what looks like an arcade stick setup. Mm. That's another thing that I think would, interest, would be interesting. I want to see some really neat accessories, especially an accessory where you slide the screen into a slightly larger pack that's actually a battery pack. So it extends the battery life even further for people who really um, are expecting to go on longer trips. Mm, yes. Extra battery life is very important. I don't want to be overly cluttered with accessories, though, because there's so many Nintendo peripherals already with the Amiibos, both the figurines and the cards. Different controllers, different controller types. The only accessory that I want for the Nintendo Switch is that battery pack idea, because it makes so much sense. You can just slide the um, screen into this extra battery pack and slide the controllers under the side of it, and boom! It's all built in. It's all done. It's a little bit heavier now, but hey, you got extra battery life. Especially, it seems like this is going to be the first Nintendo product with a built-in battery you know, as a portable product compared to the 3DS and all the other lines where you could pop the battery out, even if it was a rechargeable battery. Mm. So what do we do once they die? I don't know. The average lithium iron battery life is about two years based on how often you charge it. Yeah. I do not want my... Nintendo Switch to be a Sonicare toothbrush where when it dies, it goes in the trash. Hmm. Because based on what I've seen, I didn't see a back panel you could take off to change out the battery. Mm-hmm. And since they want a longer battery life, having the battery built in also gives you more room to make the battery larger. Maybe it turns into a permanent home console at that point. But what if they have games like Pokemon Go where taking the unit with you, physically moving it somewhere geographically is important? Hmm, I don't know, because um, there are hints it may have GPS in it, but it would also need a constant data connection, and where are you going to get that? You're not, but, you know, even just the reader that the current system has, even if it doesn't do a GPS location lock on, if it reads steps, like our 3DSs do. Mm -hmm. That's possible. Yeah, so in that sense, for a while... The actual physical motion of having a handheld item be mobile has been a factor. And it's also supposed to have a more um, smartphone-like interface to it. Because the screen's also supposed to be multi-touch on it from what the rumors say. Basically all we know other than the real, real trailer right now is rumors and how people have analyzed the living heck out of all the footage we've seen of the thing. Like People are pretty sure that the bottom of the unit uses USB-C. Which is awesome, because USB-C is going to be everywhere. And that will make it so you can plug in this thing anywhere. <laughs> also, USB-C gives you the um, fact that you have all the bandwidth needed to spit an HDMI signal out of the unit through a USB-C cable along with getting the charging over it. The USB-C will be a real big advantage from what we can tell that it uses USB-C. Because if it does USB-C, you get all these extra options. Like the fact that USB-C is also really great for add-ons. And being able to do more advanced stuff with it. it makes it expandable in the future. Like if they actually wanted to add an extra GPU into the base station, USB-C allows that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the theory and talk in you know the home console industry as a whole is less about whole unit replacement and more about just updating and refining existing. And that would go a long ways towards that model examples the playstation pro and currently i don't know what it's called right now but it's the xbox one scorpion which is their new hd hdr units which technically the wii uh not wii u <laughs> technically the wii u could actually pull it off too but the um switch could actually pull off the major visible feature that i would say of those two new consoles which is the hdr because hdr doesn't take much extra processor overhead it's only more processor overhead if you're running 4K, which you don't need to do. 
there is no real visual distance from this distance you're going to be sitting from your TV between 1080p and 4K. Now, HDR, on the other hand, makes everything pop and it looks gorgeous. Yes, I have seen it. <laughs> so, do you have anything else to say or should we actually wrap this puppy up? <laughs> oh, uh, there's not that much for me to say. I mean, I watched the trailer. I didn't watch a ton of reaction videos. I watched a couple. Sometimes I'm just not excited. And when the Wii was first announced, I was beyond excited. And every little bit that I saw and every little promotional thing I could get my hands on. Wii U? Nothing until I got my hands on it. Rayman demo? I was sold. <laughs> we played the living heck out of... What was it? Rayman... Legends? Legends? Or was it Origins? No, it was Legends. Legends. Yeah, we played the living heck out of that. Especially once we found out about the music levels. Yeah, and then I did all that work to get to the music levels, and then I didn't like the way they did the music levels. And the music levels were my favorite. You're, you're thinking about the special version of the mu music levels. Yeah, when you get to the final land, when you go through all the other levels and you get to the one that's all music. Yeah, and they enhanced the previous ones, which were the final levels of each level you previously played, which are the music levels. Yes, but I thought it was going to be a world of all new music videos, not retweaked versions of the ones that I already played that have visuals that make me go wonky. Yeah, which is the whole point to make them harder, because they're supposed to be the ultimate challenge version of those levels, and it... Just, yeah, Ember has issues with the TVs doing certain things. She, she even has issue playing through a particular level of Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. It makes her woozy, I believe. Uh, yeah, it was a very bad case of vertigo. Yeah, it's because, I don't know if I can even describe it, but the walls pulse and twist and doesn't bother me at all. I barely even notice what the walls are doing unless I'm staring right at them. Most of the time, I just want to go, stupid escort mission! <laughs> yes, but see, that's another thing I worry about with the Switch. And I worry about this with all console upgrades, is what are the visuals going to do to me? Because I never had any trouble with 8-bit games or 16-bit games. It wasn't until we got up higher that all of a sudden the visuals could start going wonky on me. Even though it was back in the Nintendo days where you had the seizure warnings. Yeah, Nintendo had a lot of problems with seizure warnings. Not for the console, but yeah, a certain episode of the Pokemon franchise involving a Porygon and an explosion. Mm-hmm. And thanks to that, we pretty much got cheated on Porygon being a more central character in the franchise. So, shall we wrap this up? Yes, before we tangent again, I'm betting out of this entire thing, maybe t seven minutes are actually about the Switch. <laughs> hey, we're still sharing our thoughts on it, and it was our thoughts on Nintendo as kind of a whole along the way, that, I mean, how we're thinking that's going to evolve with the Switch, so I think it still works. <laughs> uh, so, your final thoughts on it? I know you're not that excited for it, but what would make you excited for it? Um... Some games that I don't feel like I'm rebuying. Yes, we need more Splatoon, but from the little bit we've seen, I don't trust that it's truly a new game. You know, the Wii U didn't have that many followers, so just taking Splatoon and updating the visuals a bit, adding some more hairstyles, some more clothing, maybe some pants for the love of Celestia. They have pants! In the trailer, they had pants! Yes, but I'm saying... Just little tweaks like that would be just an update, not a new game. So it would be kind of annoying to buy a new console to rebuy a game that, I'm that I already can play, as long as they don't kill the servers on me. <laughs> well, you've never touched your amiibos. NRFB. <laughs> yeah, just like my Wolf Link. I'm like, I, I really want to play it because of the feature in Breath of the Wild... But I don't want to open up the box. He looks so good in the box. <laughs> and the poor Amiibo figure is going, help me. <laughs> I was excited about it, but I wasn't super excited about it until I saw the reveal trailer. Then I was like, I want one of these now. <laughs> I'm, I'm a very techno geek. And like Ember, she's, she enjoys technology, 
but she's not like me who's like, I want all the technology. I want to be able to play with all of it and take it apart and put it back together. And why do I always end up with extra parts? <laughs> well, I'm really excited about it. And I can't wait to play the new Splatoon, the Zelda, the Mario, the other Mario. I've never played a Skyrim slash Morrowind game, so I want to try to get that. Also, there's Andromeda. If that's true, I am so getting it on there because I'm afraid that my computer won't be able to run it. <laughs> Also, all the other games are supposed to be coming out for it, so yeah, I'm excited about it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts, I almost said ideas, on the Nintendo Switch. Please don't switch away before you subscribe. And if you would like to see more of my art, switch over after you subscribe to my DeviantArt, my Tumblr, or my Twitter. Also, if you didn't switch away and you still enjoy this channel, and you want to help me do more art as well, please head over to my Patreon and donate a little bit. There's also a coffee link if you don't feel like signing up for a Patreon account. You can also commission me if you would like to get your own little piece of art for yourself. Thank you, and have a wonderful day, evening, and have a wonderful time. <laughs> Is that more of a good morning? And if I don't see you again later, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Done. <laughs>